hello everyone in this video i'll be covering the attractor points and the animation uh, through them so let's first see what are the attractor points uh, attractor points are you know uh, they can be you know that is the bookish definition that you can see uh, it, that can be a, a point which influences a uh, any geometry like uh, uh look at this this is a point and you can see the the radius of these circles are actually you know influenced by this point so attractors can influence any number of parameters of surrounding objects including scale rotation color and position uh, i got this pdf uh, from grass grasshopper primer uh, i will put up a link where you can get this one so let's go let's see what is happening here if you can see that uh, in the rhino here yeah, that this whole geometry is influenced by this particular point so uh, if if you can see clearly that the the points closer to the this sphere are actually you know have uh, uh, lesser length but those uh, who are far have a more length so actually the length is increasing with respect to the distance from this sphere so the, our attractor point in this case is this is fair so let's build it from scratch so let's go so let me switch back to the original file uh, yes so i'll we will be starting from scratch uh, i would go to the wireframe view in perspective so if uh, let me go back to the file and let's observe what are the things that we need in this case so if you can let me go back to this uh, rendered view if you can go you can see there are the hexagonal points hexagonal grid which is extruded so we are going to need a hexagonal grid and the next thing that we will need a sphere or a point from which we will measure the distance and uh, we will be using a property called extrude extrude means uh, when you have a you know a geometry and you actually stretch out it in a particular direction we call it as extrude like uh, for example you have a circle and you extrude extrude it to make a you know cylinder so we will be using the extrude a sphere and the hexagonal grid so uh, more things that we need we will see in the exam well, so let's start from the sketch so we will first start with the hexagonal grid which is available in vector full screen yes so go to vectors grid and uh, hexagonal let's bring it here so we will uh, let me jump it to it first yes now if you can see at its parameter the first one is a base plane and the uh, next one is hexagonal radius let's bring two sliders here uh, sli is the number slider so we will be needing two sliders so, so the first one is the radius for the hexagonal grid, which I choose 0.713. Okay, and the next is uh, uh, another slider where we will decide the length and breadth of this hexagonal grid. So we will let's go for the natural numbers, and the maximum value is 50, and the current value let's make it 20 in the initial so let's connect it so the radius it has now you can see the changes in dino connected with ey and ex uh, let me get like 13 for the faster processing um yeah just fine so now that the next thing that we have to do you know as you have seen in uh the video next thing that we need is extrude let's bring extrude here extrude extrude is here so let's see the parameters of the extrude extrude take two parameters the first one is a profile curve so our curve will we will get the curve from hexagonal grid and next thing that we see is the extrusion direction so actually we have to tell uh, the extrusion like in which direction we want to extrude and uh, you can define even the length from this so first let's get our uh, the point the 
the point so we can bring the point from here vector from here so we will have a point from here the tractor point so the next thing we, that we have to do is measure the distance between the hex the hexagonal grid and the attractor point so first uh, let me convert it back to the point i take the point i convert it so let's bring the distance so with the help of this distance component we can measure the distance between the uh, actually this p point uh, gives the center point of all the hexagonal grids so we will measure the distance of each uh, centers of these hexagonal grids and the attractor point so let's connect it with them now we have our now we have our you know the uh, attractor point distance so let's bring a vector uh, we need no we need amplitude let yes amplitude so amplitude will help us uh, define a vector uh, and the direction uh, so this vector will contain the direction and the amplitude along which the extrusion will take place so if you go if you can see we have the z axis here along which we want the extrusion so let's bring the z vector vector and the unit z so we have our vector defined and we will be defining the length of each hexagonal grid by the distance from you know the the point the tractor point so let's connect the this with extrusion now you can see we can now you can clearly see we have something uh the structure and uh, now you can see that there's a red line let's see what's wrong here this curve could not be extruded we have the error so let's see let's find what is wrong here okay so our problem is the the point zero zero that we have defined here so it cannot extrude let's change the point here so let's make it so you know in the animation if you can see clearly there was a uh, uh, there was a sphere along which uh, the motion was happening uh, the, the, here is the file let me go back to the yes so let's build a sphere yes so sphere uh, we will define the radius from here uh, the point actually is radius is default now we will plug in the preview connect it with g so our next task is you know to define the points along which uh, So let me reduce it. It's taking a lot of time to process. Make it let's may make it ten. Okay. So this is fine. So let's bring on sliders to define the coordinates of this point. Sliders. Number slider, yes. So I can decide the height. So uh, let me define the parameters I will want. Uh, real numbers are fine actually. The maximum value I wish to be at 550. Okay, and uh, make it around. 12 okay it's fine connected with j so you can see it have moved up now i can influence the z axis now what i need is so right now i want to also influence the x and y so in the video you have seen that the actually the sphere is moving in circular direction so i will be using the parametric form of circle to make it move in circular direction that is 
x component it r cos theta and y is r sin theta so let's bring our component so let's bring on a slider in this slider what we'll be doing we will let's name it theta and it will be real number the minimum value will be 0 and maximum will be 2 pi 2 you can just type pi now the theta value is defined now the next slider that we will be needing is of radius let's bring on another slider that and this one will be our radius name it radius okay yes so i have chose radius to be like you know the make it the maximum value is 50 and uh, let's take the value to be like 10 current value so for the x so what we need we have the radius and the theta now what we need we need the r cos theta and r sin theta components let's bring on sine and cosine component we have the sine let's bring cosine yes we have both of them we will be let's uh, press alt and drag for let's make some space yes now let's bring the multiplication parameters no it's available in maths okay this uh, no this yes this is multiplication we will be needing two yes so our first parameter is multiplication of yes the r radius is multiplied now the theta and it have now become r sine theta that's connected with the x and the next component will be the theta will be connected here too it's a b and radius will be connected with a so this is our y so now if you change the theta you can you will see the sphere is moving let me zoom out zoom it out yes now as i vary the theta you can see the sphere is moving and along with this the whole structure is moving so actually the we are done here so let me put the values which i have put in the video so the value was uh, in extent i have put 50 okay and now the structure has become big absolutely okay it's gonna take some time because the more the value will take it's it has to do some calculations so it will take time zoom it out yes now you can see it's available here and the radius i have taken to be 40 okay press ok So you know you can see the things are taking some time to process. It is just because you know I have increased the number of grids, so the calculations are you know a bit heavier right now. And the jet coordinate I have taken fifteen point seven five zero. Fifteen point seven five zero. Okay, press okay. So we are done here so now is the time for you know the animation so another thing which i did i converted back to the rendered mode yes rendered mode now it looks really nice so to let is zoom it out yes this one so to the do the render let's just go to the theta press right click animate now what it will do it will you know take uh, from the minimum value of theta to the maximum it will take you know uh, uh, the frames it will take images and you can decide how much images do you want between that range let's uh, you can see i've decided 200 so uh, between 0 to 2 pi it will divide that range into the 200 parts and it will take uh, 
the images at each part and it will save it save it so i you can decide where you want to save from here and the image size from clicking here and which view do you want and then just press ok now when i just press ok you can see it has started to generating the frames so it is have already generated one frame so generating frame one of 200 you can see so after some time you know it will generate all the frame so you can turn it into the uh into the video if you want see you in the next video